Hey everyone, welcome to the results video of the Shuttle Coaster Mini Contest. In this uh, mini contest, uh, players are allowed to build a shuttle coaster, so a coaster that uh, doesn't follow a complete circuit, but one that goes uh, backwards and uh, or forwards and backwards along the same track. Um, so yeah, they had to go forwards and backwards uh, exactly along the same track, so no uh, switch tracks, uh, etc. And players could decide on the size uh, of the map that they wanted to use, but there was a limit on the amount of tractions they could have opened, just so they wouldn't make it uh, too big. Anyway, um, this round was pretty popular, we got 28 completed entries. So I'll uh, begin with the one that got last place, and then I'll finish by announcing the winner of the round. Okay, in last place we have this entry from a human being named Alex. Uh, he went for the B&M inverted coaster, as his uh, shuttle coaster. That's quite an uh, interesting choice, not something you see uh, very often. Now, I already predicted this entry wouldn't get a very high score. Um, mostly because it isn't uh, decorated uh, a lot. It's mostly just trees uh, dispersed uh, throughout the map. When you make a ride, it's always a good idea to just support it with several other rides. Just make it look more interesting. Have some paths around it, some shops, some nice buildings, etc. Uh, etc. Et also, here it's uh, mostly just grass. Uh, just try and play a bit with the ground textures. Uh, also, don't just make smooth hills, uh, also have some cliffs showing, and it will already make your uh, landscape look much more interesting. Now, uh, there's also some traffic here, but as you can see, it's going really slow. When you build a track like this, so you can always put some uh, or hide some chain lift on the track, and that way, uh, with some cheats, you can actually make the cars uh, go uh, much faster. Uh, sorry, they're a little bit slow to watch now. The guests that are walking are actually faster than the cars. So that's probably uh, not a good thing. Okay, here's the entry from Seklar. He made this uh, launched uh, uh, boomerang coaster. You can see it uh, leave the station here, go through the layout, and then it goes back through the same layout backwards. There's several supporting rides here. Uh, the buildings, I think they look a little bit strange. Um, this uh, track texture is, uh, is uh, probably a bit overdone. Um, yeah, it just looks a little bit uh, weird for a roof. Not really sure what the plan was uh, for this. Uh, it kind of looks maybe like bones or something. I'm not really sure. Um, at least the queue is done uh, pretty nicely. Although it's probably nicer if the queue actually uh, yeah, travels uh, along the layout. Uh, something like that. I think uh, the queue could have been uh, done uh, much nicer. But this part here is, uh, is pretty nice. Probably uh, not a good idea to have a wall that's uh, so high right next to the queue here. Um, you should probably put something uh, that's see-through, just so the guests can actually see the ride as they're queuing uh, for it. Oh, yeah, overall, um, yeah, the map size, of course, is pretty small. I do kind of like the trees uh, that uh, Seklar put here on the side. I also like that he actually mowed the grass. That uh, generally looks uh, looks quite nice. All right, here's the entry from Jay Stank. Oh, he made this pair of uh, uh, <laughs> shuttle coasters here. Well, of course, uh, people couldn't really give these coasters a high rating, so that's probably why this uh, uh, entry is uh, at close to the bottom. Now, of course, the map uh, does uh, look really nice. Um, I really like the way he built this castle here. All these flowers, these nice uh, trees here. These nice patches of foliage, and also here, down here, that's also really nice. I also really like this section here with this uh, wooden or this boardwalk and these uh, monorail uh, uh, walls here as, uh, as a decoration. So uh, yeah, I think this uh, this all looks really nice. Plaza de la Foz. <laughs> so yeah, probably a theme to uh, Marcel Foz. That's pretty cool. Uh, from the other angles, uh, not really sure. Um, this looks kind of strange. Uh, you can also look into the building here in Dash Grass, so I think this entry was just meant to be viewed from uh, one angle. So yeah, overall with this, uh, two, this pair of really short uh, shuttle coasters, and the fact that you could can see inside there, that's probably the reasons why it uh, didn't score very well. But uh, in my opinion, I think this uh, part uh, looks very beautiful. So I hope to see a park from Jazz Tank like this uh, next time with a more elaborate uh, layout. That would be really cool. Okay, here's the entry from Raymond L. Um, he made this uh, twister coaster, uh, shuttle coaster here. 
uh, weird uh, layout. It looks quite under supported. I mean, there's just a track here and there's nothing holding it up. Uh, these buildings, I think they are actually uh, pretty cool. Um, okay, here's the station building for the coaster. Uh, here's another uh, big building and there's also a big building here in the corner with two dinghy slides uh, coming from it. Uh, yeah, I think they, they look quite interesting. I like the color scheme that's used for these thingy slides. I especially like the doors which these uh, these vehicles are coming from. Now, as for the coaster, well, if you run this map for a, for a while, then eventually the coaster will crash. So uh, that's probably also not, uh, not a very good uh, thing. Uh, yeah, when you make a design like this, just make sure it... Uh, runs uh, safely for a while after uh, after opening the park um, well here also in front of the building there's a big uh, pond with a fountain uh, here's a diagonal section now when you have a section like this uh, it might look nice to uh, so i just lowered the ground there a bit in in one of the corners so uh, let's disable clearance checks and make the track invisible so I will try to make the hatch go into this lowered corner like that and when you do that the, it will actually look like it's uh, also diagonal just a little trick uh, it's more visible when I remove the monorail track here but this now looks like a straight section of, uh, of hatch that might be a cool trick to, uh, to do if you also want to have a diagonal uh, hatch so this uh, ride is called Monorail Wall 1, or Monorail 1. Uh, it's probably nicer if you actually name your track and texture uh, rides. Or actually all your rides, the Twister Coaster also isn't uh, isn't named. So that's probably a bad thing. So yeah, quite some things here which uh, could still uh, use some improvement. Okay, next up is the entry from the Shack. Uh, he made a recreation, or a coaster inspired by Grease Lightning. This is a real coaster. Um, Again, he made a weird thing here at the top of this uh, of this spine. Not really sure what uh, that's supposed to represent or why he made it there. I believe the real coaster didn't uh, didn't have that. Um, but yeah, the coaster layout. Uh, well, yeah, it's a shuttle loop. There's not much you can do uh, wrong there. I actually quite like it. He also made some uh, catwalks here, um, and uh, I think this is some uh, machinery here. Could be a winch that uh, that uh, actually propels the coaster forward. Now, um, other than the coaster, it does look a little bit empty here. You can see a lot of this uh, grass mixed with dirt around the coaster. When you put that around your uh, coaster without anything on it, it will just it will look quite uh, empty. I'm not really sure if that's a good idea. Maybe it could have used uh, a few more fences around it. Not sure. And there's also a little uh, fountain here. Um, yeah, the uh, complaint I got from most people is that the map just looked a little bit too empty. Maybe it could have used some more black tile uh, a bit more around the coaster. Just uh, to make this these empty parts uh, go away. Okay, then we have the entry from Pyrosif. Pyrosif went for this uh, boardwalk uh, park. Uh, also quite some underwater plants here. Uh, so yeah, the shuttle coaster is this coaster that's here in the corner. He went for RMC track with this uh, wooden coaster uh, trains on it. Um, yeah, as for the layout, um, it's just two uh, helixes with two uh, spikes. The station building, um, yeah, the roof just looks uh, very open with just some strips of material on it. When you make a roof like this, um, I think it's uh, it's better to make it look like it's actually. Uh, close so just to make it look like it actually does something so maybe some wooden coaster track under it uh, would uh, look nice here or maybe just some actual roof scenery this is looks uh, very uh, open um, yeah as for the boardwalk itself um, yeah the, these edges here are very jagged um, there's these triangular um, wooden pieces uh, it's probably better to use those here rather than these rectangular pieces this just looks uh, kind of strange. Also, there's no fence uh, on the edge of the boardwalk here. So this would actually be quite dangerous for the guests uh, to walk uh, around. Now, um, when you make these other water plants, um, what I typically recommend is 
to uh, not space them apart equally as was done here but rather just make uh, some clumps of uh, scenery so just put some uh, just put some rock floor for example uh, something uh, like this and then just uh, play a bit with the with the height of it and then just play some uh, let's see if this is if I can do this there we go I just play some uh, little clumps of uh, of scenery on it and mix some plants uh, put some rocks as well um, I think that uh, that looks uh, already looks much nicer than just uh, putting a few plants uh, here and there but yeah that's just a little uh, recommendation uh, from me I think overall this park looks uh, quite nice I kind of like this uh, fountain that's here in the middle okay here's the entry from Mart uh, Mart made this uh, little shuttle coast here in the middle of this foresty uh, area now this is uh, quite an interesting uh, layout so the coaster gets uh, I think it gets launched here and it goes up through this loop and then it passes through this building now I, I think this building is a bit too low because you can see the coaster track uh, clipping uh, through it um, probably it would have been better to make the opening of this building a bit higher so I'm not really sure if this is the best space to uh, pass your uh, coaster through, uh, through a building because you can see the opening has to be quite wide here because uh, it's done in the middle of a curve might be better to do it at the, at the straight part of the track and here we see the structure for the for the spike um, yeah I think that's actually uh, looking quite nice um, here at the end we have this uh, building here for uh, I guess this is a storage track uh, not really sure if that's necessary for a coaster that can have only uh, one train because then uh, usually the maintenance etc is just done in the station of the of the coaster but yeah overall um, yeah just some nice trees I kind of like the the foliage the, uh, that was done here as well okay here's the entry from Brian 3d now <laughs> he actually made quite a funny entry uh, Levy was talking about the uh, park where the Owners uh, didn't care much about uh, the efficiency of the brakes or their rollback features. So the coaster looks like it does a full circuit. But actually it goes up the lift hill partly and then... Uh, or it only goes up the lift hill until here and then it rolls back. Then it does this layout uh, backwards. And then when it gets here, um, it uh, stops and then it goes forwards uh, through, through the layout again. <laughs> So yeah, it uh, looks like a full circuit, but it's actually uh, <laughs> it actually does uh, quite a funny thing here. So yeah, it does uh, go quite uh, slow here. Here you can see an underwater section. So normally it wouldn't be able to make it through, but there's actually some boosters in the track which only work when the train's going forwards, and those help it uh, propel uh, yeah through the track uh, layout again. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, this was quite a funny entry, uh, the story also uh, helped. <laughs> uh, just uh, some, uh, some other rides here as well, this is a merry-go-round, uh, launched uh, freefall, uh, called Power Surge. So, uh, yeah, quite a, I thought this was a quite a fun uh, coaster. <laughs> I, I quite uh, enjoyed the story and uh, how it was executed. Okay, here's the coaster from uh, King Gray's official. He made this... Uh, uh, Fekoma Junior Boomerang with some nice uh, decoration around it to form this hardline uh, twisted track. I quite like this uh, this uh, layout that he made for this coaster. Also really like the queue here that he made. So he used the standard queue but he decorated it in such a way that it actually looks uh, quite nice. So I think he did a nice job here also the foliage. Uh, I think it looks uh, really good. The only thing I don't really like about this coaster is that uh, here in the middle there's this unbanked uh, section of track. Uh, probably would have been nicer if this uh, part of the track was also banked. I also saw some uh, comments from uh, other people uh, commenting on this. So yeah, if this uh, if this was uh, changed then probably it would have been rated a little bit better. But still, uh, I really enjoyed this entry. I think it looks uh, really nice. Maybe for the next entry it would be nice to actually make a custom uh, park entrance here. Or maybe just uh, make a cutout, make it look like uh, it's part of a bigger park. Okay, here's the park from NFE. 
He also went for a Fekoma Junior Boomerang. Now, I really like the layout of this coaster. Uh, it's quite a simple layout, but from this angle, uh, it really looks uh, like it's squished into this little spot here. It's a nice uh, helix here. I also like the way the these uh, sp spikes of the coaster um, yeah, go over the path here. Actually, the entrance for the coaster is also in this section. I like the way he covered his skew. It's uh, like there's two of these uh, flowers or windmills here that are actually uh, connected. This, uh, I think this is a really nice way to uh, decorate your queue. Now, I also really like all the plants here in uh, this section. And actually that the coaster is in a bit of a deeper part. Uh, you can see all these guests uh, watching the coaster here. So that's some really good uh, interaction. Now, there were also uh, a few things that I liked a little bit less. Uh, for example, you can see this maze here. You can see it's really shoehorned in here. Um, it's a very uh, regular pattern here with this, just this zigzag. Not really sure if that's the nicest way to do a maze. Also, there's this building here, which looks like a hat. <laughs> uh, not really my favorite uh, shape for a building. But uh, like I said, overall, I'm, uh, I uh, really like the way this uh, coaster looks. And especially this part here in the middle. I think it's a really nice uh, interaction. Okay, here's the park from Yuppie. Now, uh, if you regularly watch my videos, um, You'll probably see a lot of names you haven't seen before. There were lots of newcomers this round. So I was also really pleased with that. Now Yippie made this big shuttle coaster here. Uh, it's really fast, really big. And uh, I actually quite like it. Um, so first the train gets pulled up this lift hill here. Then it travels through this barrel roll. Now this barrel roll uh, might be a little bit uh, too fast. Uh, <laughs> um, I always like to put them at higher uh, parts of the coaster. Um, you could imagine this as a barrel that what that uh, is supposed to be more spaced out, as you can see. I sometimes see them in real life, but yeah, Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 only allows for this size, so it might be a little bit too fast uh, for this. Now there's also this uh, big loop here. Um, it's a strange uh, support structure holding it up. I believe it was called a hovering loop in the story. Um, yeah, I like to just put uh, poles here next to the coaster as a way of uh, giving it extra supports. But yeah, um, uh, this was uh, chosen, so uh, yeah, this is uh, what it has become. <laughs> uh, yeah, not my favorite, but uh, some other people uh, may like it. Uh, something that I did uh, quite like is how we did the station for the coaster. That's quite nice. And also the queue for the coaster. I also really like how it's uh, decorated here. It's pretty cool. I also love this uh, sign here with uh, this uh, structure uh, for the coaster named Arc Flash. Now, um, something that probably isn't really necessary for a shuttle coaster is this transfer track here. I mean, uh, the coaster will probably simply be maintained in the station uh, because there's only one train in a shuttle coaster. Now, something I also which I really liked was this uh, support tower here for the coaster. Something which I liked less is uh, the way these underwater plants were done. Uh, like I said before, just put some rock floor, uh, vary the, the height a bit, and uh, put these plants in clumps. Uh, and it, uh, it will usually look much nicer. Okay, here's the entry from Piano Dan. He made this uh, little launched uh, shuttle coast here. You can see it leave the station here. And here it goes uh, through the loop. Then here there's another helix. And he actually used the trick to uh, give the coaster a chain lift at the end, which releases the train uh, backwards. Uh, yeah, I really like when I see people uh, use stuff that was in my tutorials. Um, and that actually gives the coaster the speed it needs to to actually make it back to the station. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty clever. Um, yeah, also I really like the way he did the foliage here. These trees, plants are really nice. Also with these waterfalls in the middle of this coaster. That's pretty cool. Um, there's also some buildings here. Now, I really don't like how they are decorated here at the back. It looks a little bit uh, empty here. But the front of these houses, I think they're, uh, they're pretty nice. Now, there's also some other rides here, of which one has a <laughs> really interesting name. It's a really uh, short lunch freefall. And it has a, also has a very interesting name. <laughs> I wonder what the guests are thinking about this. Nice. 
All right, uh, <laughs> I think we should move on to the next entry. Okay, here's the entry from Tim22Z7. He recreated the CK Underground from Wallaby, Belgium. I actually rode this ride myself once. It's a really fun ride. So inside this building, there's a shuttle loop. You can see it here. It simply uh, um, launches the train forward through the loop up the spike and then it does the same track again uh, backwards. Now, um, I was hoping it was also decorated on the inside, but sadly uh, that was not the case. Uh, it's uh, just a rock floor here on the inside. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's focus on the stuff that is here. Uh, I think the outside of the building was done in a really nice way. I love the color scheme on this uh, building, the way it's decorated, especially this part with the loop. I think it looks uh, great. So yeah, I, I think Tim did a really nice uh, job on that. Um, one thing I was a little bit disappointed with is uh, the way this uh, diagonal path here looks. I think it would have uh, looked nicer if he actually made some uh, diagonal sections here. Uh, so that some diagonal fences. You can use uh, some uh, different kinds of track pieces for that. I think it will make your uh, paths look much more organic rather than this zigzag kind of path. Okay, then we have a tie for 14th place. This is the entry from Safi Adam. Uh, he made this uh, coaster that looks like one of those Schwarzkopf uh, yeah, shuttle coasters with the station passing through its own loop. So the train, uh, I'm not really sure how it goes. The, tra yeah, the train uh, gets uh, uh, pulled backwards here up this spike. Then it gets released, passes through the track here, through the loop. And then it goes up uh, uh, on this hill uh, forwards again. Now uh, the real kind of uh, this ride actually has these spikes uh, meet up at some point. But uh, this is also an interesting variation on this kind of ride. Now, I like the support structure that uh, that Safi Adam uh, made. Um, also, it's uh, actually fun to see these uh, water tanks here in the middle. They might be uh, to act as some extra weight to uh, keep the coaster in uh, in its place. Sometimes you see a big block of concrete uh, on rides like these. Uh, I believe this uh, this uh, probably was like a traveling ride. So they couldn't anchor the ride to the ground, so they just used a heavy weight to uh, keep the coaster in place. Uh, yeah, you, you quite often see this on rides that used to be traveling rides and then uh, get put in a park permanently. Now the foliage around it is also uh, quite nice. Some nice fences uh, as well. So yeah, I think uh, Safi Adam did a great job on this ride. Okay, here's the ride from Marky Boy. He made this pair of uh, yeah, dueling uh, woodies. No, I also made a ride like this once in my park, uh, the Great Circle. Um, it's always fun to make uh, one of these. Uh, they also uh, pass; it, they also cross each other at some point. Uh, yeah, it's just a fun, uh, fun dueling uh, ride. Now, uh, I think Marky Boy did an amazing job on the station. It looks nice here with these uh, pillars that he used, with also these pieces of mini golf track. To make it look like the station has uh, some of these uh, entrance uh, gates here. I also like what he did here with this wild mouse coaster track to act as these uh, extra supports here for the coaster. I think that looks pretty cool. He also borrowed a uh, fountain design from a car runner. You can also see fountain by car runner. I think it uh, looks quite nice here next to this uh, layout. So yeah, um, I think he did a really nice job on this coaster. It's a it's a fun uh, layout to watch. Um, there's also some really nice decorations around the coaster, and he also did the station in a really nice way. So yeah, nice job from uh, Marky Boy. Okay, here's the entry from R Adrian 1994. Now uh, I love the landscaping that he did in this entry. Uh, lots of height differences, and the coaster actually plays into that uh, nicely. It just fits into the landscape really well. Um, I also like the way he decorated it. So there's this uh, tunnel uh, section above this uh, track here. But I think that looks uh, pretty cool. It looks like it finished here inside this tunnel. It's kind of like uh, this uh, mine shaft thingy it might be winching up uh, the coaster. Uh, as for the layout of the coaster, yeah, it's mostly flat here in this uh, with this section of helixes. Maybe it would have been nice with some more uh, elevation change uh, in this part of the coaster. 
but yeah, maybe it's just me and nitpicking. <laughs> um, and then here it uh, goes up again uh, in, into this same uh, tunnel section and then uh, goes through the layout backwards. I believe the trains are actually... Uh, oh wait, no, they're the normal six-seaters. Never mind. And then here the train reaches the station again, uh, which it overshoots and then goes back uh, forwards. I also kind of like this uh, train that uh, passes uh, through the layout here. It's a little graveyard here. So yeah, just some nice uh, decorations uh, throughout this entry and uh, some incredible landscaping. Alright, I just uh, lubricated my trout with a glass of water. So, um, here's the entry from Carp Runner. He scored a little bit higher than R. Adrian 1994. He made this recreation of uh, Deja Vu. Uh, no, I think he did an incredible job uh, with all these uh, different kinds of supports. Uh, this uh, support structure, I think it looks uh, incredible. Uh, it used all these nice pieces that you can see observation tower pieces here. Uh, yeah, there are some of these uh, uh, poles here, uh, single rail coaster pieces. Uh, yeah, I uh, really love the way this uh, structure looks. Uh, it looks really nice for this uh, for this coaster. Um, yeah, also I love this uh, arch here above these uh, sections. Uh, this is the entrance section, the exit section, with a little waterfall uh, in between. Uh, yeah, I think Carper just did an amazing job of de decorating that. Uh, also love all the, the way he did these trees here. Uh, this is just really nice foliage. Also a nice uh, little fountain here, like uh, he uh, likes to uh, make them. Uh, also a little building here with uh, some uh, shops. Uh, sadly, they're just called Burger Bar 1 and Drink Stall 1. Might have, uh, might have been nicer if they had a nice name. But still, overall, this is a beautiful entry. Uh, so yeah, it just looks uh, incredible. Uh, I think this is the, one of the nicest recreations of a ride like this that I've ever seen. Great job. Okay, here's the entry from Bob Kenny Unicorn. Uh, he made one of these arrow uh, shuttle loops, one of the first kinds of launch coaster. Uh, one thing that I thought was really cool about this entry was that he uh, actually made a push car and a and a and uh, another push car on this side so you can actually see it here uh, he actually used one vehicle of a reverser roller coaster uh, you can see it here and it actually looks like this car is uh, pushing uh, the coaster backwards again so I believe that's also how the real uh, arrow shuttle loops operate there's a push car on both sides which uh, actually launches the vehicle so I think that's uh, a really neat trick I really enjoyed that when I saw it also this uh, support structure that he made with these arches uh, using this uh, RMC track. I think that's uh, that's brilliant. It's a really nice way to make this uh, support structure for this coaster. Although the platform here on this side, uh, it does look a little bit heavy for this uh, arch. Probably uh, maybe would have been better to slim it down uh, a little bit. Also a wild mouse here. Um, yeah, for the rest of the of the map, um, it does look uh, slightly uh, empty. There's uh, there's quite a lot of uh, trees here. Uh, maybe it would be nice to go for a map that's a little bit uh, smaller. Something uh, which I would also recommend is to uh, actually hide these uh, fences. There's a console uh, command you can use for that. Remove park fences, and then just make your own fences. Uh, but it looks like some fences uh, are already in place in form of these uh, hedges here. I know, it's just some, uh, something I like to do, because I think it looks nicer than having these uh, default uh, fences here. Okay, here's the entry from Spaceman Spumoni, uh, previously known as Spaceman Spiff. Uh, this was one of my favorite entries, actually. Uh, I really liked the way he did this uh, Schwarzkopf uh, ride. No, he did add a little helix here at the end, which normally is not here for that kind of ride. But uh, I think he did an incredible job at this ride. I love the way these uh, tracks here meet up in this tower. Also really like the way he did the supports for them. Uh, also like the way that he did the queue and uh, yeah, also really cool supports here. Um, there's some funny uh, parts in this park. This park is uh, themed after uh, hot dogs or wieners. <laughs> You can also see this uh, sign here saying, eat hot dogs. This is uh, right, the rotisserie. 
And there's also this hot dog eating contest. You can see lots of vomit uh, stains here. <laughs> I thought that was uh, something that, uh, that's also really funny. You can also see some handyman that's struggling here to actually reach these vomit stains. So yeah, this also shows that uh, handyman will actually uh, actively try to seek out uh, litter and uh, vomit. So uh, interesting uh, information to know. So yeah, I thought this was a really uh, cool entry. It's a little bit small, but uh, the hot dog eating contest was really funny. And I just liked, uh, really liked the support structure for this ride. Great work. Okay, here's the entry from Lurker. Now <laughs> you can immediately see that this is an entry from Lurker. Because uh, he likes to make uh, buildings uh, like these. Um, yeah, with many different layers and colors. Uh, and these rounded roofs is kind of his uh, signature element. Um, and of course there's this uh, shuttle coaster here in the middle. Kind of reminds me of one of those Vekoma Junior Boomerang uh, coasters. Now one thing that I found a little bit jarring about this entry is this uh, uh, mixture between banked and unbanked tracks. For example there's this unbanked curve upwards uh, and then downwards then going into this banked track. And then there's unbanked here again and here it's banked again. So when you make a layout like this. Uh, I can recommend just going for a kind of track that allows you to keep using a banked track, like the looping coaster track. I think it uh, will make it look less uh, jarring, but uh, maybe it's just me uh, who uh, doesn't like kind doesn't like uh, when people do that. Because it uh, did end uh, quite high up in the scores, uh, but yeah, that could have also been because the landscaping in this entry is uh, really nice. I love all the elevation changes here, all these different paths at different levels. Uh, and of course, all the little buildings, uh, all with uh, different uh, functions as well. Um, yeah, just a really nice entry and a uh, really nice landscape. And of course, it, it uses the Lurker Sunset uh, palette, which also gives the uh, park a really nice uh, glow. Okay, and then uh, we have another tie, and this is the entry from AstroTurt. Uh, he made this uh, giga coaster here. Um, it's a very interesting uh, shoestring that he uh, used here. So uh, if you look here underground, uh, the coaster will actually s stop. It's actually in uh, in shuttle mode. So here's the second station, and then it goes backwards again. Uh, you might be thinking, how does it actually go backwards? But uh, yeah, it's actually a, a shoestring that's uh, hidden underground. Uh, so the back vehicles of this coaster, he um, actually changed them into a maze. You can see that when you use when you do edit uh, ride vehicles, I believe the ride is called Pay Dirt. So uh, the first few vehicles, you can see it's just the coaster vehicles. But from vehicle five on, it's uh, they were changed to mazes. You can also change the mass of the ride, and yeah, that uh, when you change them into a maze, that's uh, that's. Uh, vehicles will become invisible and the shoestring track itself is also invisible so that actually makes it uh, quite difficult to see uh, how this was done so if you ever want to hide your shoestring track uh, this is a great way to do it that is also how the train gets launched backwards there's some uh, track underground that actually uh, takes care of that it's uh, actually quite uh, clever now there's also some other rides here here's a uh, I believe this is a ride that uh, drops the guests into a mine shaft, kind of like I did in uh, Mount uh, Dirklink. There's also some really nice uh, buildings here, uh, and another uh, uh, ride here. I believe it's a shoestring ride. Now, um, yeah, some things uh, which could have been improved. Uh, maybe, uh, well, there's the, this zigzag fence here. I think it would would have looked nice with some uh, diagonal. Uh, track maybe to make the fence here also uh, yeah it kind of looks like some of these parts are a bit empty maybe a black tile a little bit more or uh, maybe decorate if it was decorated a bit more ar around the parts uh, then probably would have looked a bit more uh, complete okay here's the entry from Mick Andy 89 um, you got the same score as Astro third uh, he recreated one of these Vekoma boomerangs from uh, uh, this one's from Energy Landia. Uh, I think he did an awesome job uh, recreating this uh, coaster. Uh, 
I also love the way he made these paths uh, around it, also with these uh, monorail pieces to make it look more organic. So I think this uh, part of the park uh, looks really good. Uh, also this uh, for this coaster he made this diagonal tunnel here on top of this building. Uh, also this section here with these uh, fences under the coaster. Uh, yeah, it all this looks uh, really good. Uh, I think he did an incredible job here with all the track architecture and the scenery for uh, decorating uh, this ride. So there's a bit of a cutout of uh, a different ride. There's the log flume, which you can uh, find here in the park. Also, I really like the way he did these uh, arches here. They look really cool. Um, and there's also a road right next to the right next to the park. Although there's this weird uh, castle piece, uh, he said he didn't know how that uh, ended up there. <laughs> Must have placed it there uh, by uh, accident. Whoops. Alright, here's the entry from Birion. Uh, he made this uh, space themed coaster. So uh, yeah, it does look like it's uh, in the middle of uh, nowhere. Uh, so here's the station. Um, I believe it's just a launched uh, coaster. So uh, the coaster gets launched from here. Goes uh, through the top hat over this diagonal uh, hill. You can actually see it uh, right here. Over this diagonal hill. Through this uh, helix here. Um, yeah, I, I love the way this helix is uh, done here. Coaster also looks uh, pretty nice. It's quite fast. But uh, the layout also allows for it to be fast because it's all very spacious. And here he uses the trick where a chain lift uh, hoists up the coaster and then releases it uh, backwards. Oh, and then it goes through the layout again, uh, but uh, backwards. So yeah, uh, quite a nice uh, layout and it has enough speed to make it back through the layout uh, while going backwards. So it's a nice uh, ride design. Um, Something that I also really liked was this uh, backward section here, which he also made really cool supports for. And nice uh, decorations here throughout the park as well. And probably uh, something which uh, uh, you should avoid is uh, having your staff uh, run around like this, like crazy. Um, probably a good idea to just set our speeds back to normal when you uh, submit the park, because this looks uh, kind of dumb, <laughs> in my opinion. Now, uh, something which was also a bit of a letdown, uh, well, the pallet that's used is quite nice, but the pallet absolutely doesn't work with this satellite dish, for example. It just looks really weird with this pallet. Uh, it's probably not a good idea to use it here. And the same for this uh, this uh, sphere over here. Okay, here's the entry from Manticore. Uh, yeah, looks like he uh, made this version of uh, one of those uh, PAX uh, coasters. Um, Back to the Russian uh, company, they made a few coasters, and I believe one of them is in uh, Switzerland. So it actually has kind of a strange layout with several hills, uh, then a loop, and then it has a spike which actually uh, um, goes backwards for a bit. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, layout. Now, uh, Manticore, I think he did an incredible job at uh, recreating a coaster like this. Uh, I love the way uh, also he did the support for it, uh, so like the fence he made around it. Uh, so uh, yeah, surrounded with nice trees, uh, it gives a really nice border here. Um, so it is a bit, bit more of a deserty area. Uh, I think he did a really nice job on the queue here as well. I like this uh, fence that he made in the middle. Uh, it's something you also see in real queues uh, quite often. So you have one for fast pass or something like that, in a normal queue. That's actually quite uh, clever how we did that. Um, yeah, one letdown for this ride that I saw was that he actually used the flying coaster cars. So for this section here, the guests will be riding on their back. So that uh, would probably be uh, quite uh, awkward for them uh, to ride. But still, um, yeah, Manticore did an absolutely amazing job on this coaster. I uh, just love the way this uh, looks. Incredible job. All right, then in fourth place, we have this entry from Inox. He made this limb launched coaster. It actually gets launched uh, backwards <laughs> through this uh, top hat here and goes through this uh, spiral here. And then it goes uh, partly up this uh, vertical spike. It doesn't go very high. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was also uh, the big question mark I had with this ride. It goes quite slow here. It doesn't go very high, but somehow it does make it through this top hat. Uh, 
so yeah, the physics on this ride, I, I think they're a little bit off. Now, uh, this ride is actually quite uh, uh, clever. It uses, it's actually very tall. The map's actually very tall, and there's a big shoestring hidden underground. But uh, using the palette and lots of uh, base blocks in the black tile color, he actually makes it look like the map is uh, less tall than it actually is. Now, some nice custom supports on this ride as well. I really like these towers that he uh, made, but also the supports here. And also these paths here in this part of the map. Uh, I think they look really nice and uh, organic. That's uh, that's pretty cool. So the buildings look really nice. Uh, yeah, as for this coaster, I think he did a really nice job on making this station diagonal. And also on launching the train uh, backwards. That's quite clever. But yeah, like I said, the physics of the ride, I think they're a little bit off. Uh, it probably would have been nice if he actually made the coaster go uh, higher up this uh, spike. Alright, there's just uh, three entries remaining. Now, th some of the scores were quite close. So uh, I will just show the last three entries and after that I will reveal which one is the winner of this round. Okay, here's the entry from Risiko. He made this really cool uh, Wild West uh, looking village. With all these nice uh, buildings here, saloons uh, and other stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you need to look at, if you want to make nice buildings, uh, you need inspiration. I think this is a great map to look at. I actually used it for uh, my timeline park uh, entry today. I want to have some nice Wild West buildings, so I just uh, looked for some inspiration here. Now the coaster is also really nice. It's one of these uh, Vekoma Junior boomerangs. We've already seen quite a few of them. Now Risco did an amazing job here on the supports. I like these uh, central towers here in the middle with the coaster connecting to uh, both sides. Also this little uh, cabin here on the top. Uh, yeah, just really nicely uh, decorated here. Also a plowing machine here behind the coaster. <laughs> yeah, um, really nice uh, Wild West uh, village. I love the way the coaster also uh, travels around these, uh, these buildings. That's really cool. Maybe it would have been nice if it also traveled through one of these uh, buildings. But still, it already looks quite incredible. Uh, the queue uh, also uh, travels uh, right under the coaster here next to these buildings. I think that's uh, quite clever. It's always nice to see a nice uh, queue uh, throughout the coaster structure. So yeah, wonderful buildings, uh, great coaster. So this uh, entry from uh, Risiko is uh, it's really beautiful. Okay, here's the entry from Rhythm. He made this underwater uh, park. <laughs> So it said something about a kraken, an angler fish, and uh, uh, that was another creature, maybe an octopus. Probably this one. This is kraken food. Uh, well, I'm not really sure. Maybe there was a shark. Probably a shark. Yeah, this coaster is the shark. That was it. <laughs> so here you can see the coaster. It uh, it actually leaves from here. The station is over here. And it gets launched through the layout through the big loop. And then it travels up the spine here, and in the spine there's a chain lift which uh, whisks uh, whisk it up uh, further forwards, and then gets released backwards throughout the track layout again. Oh, also really nice uh, how we uh, rhythm decorated the park. You can see these enterprises which act as uh, oysters. So actually, when they travel upwards, you can see these uh, spheres, which are the pearls which they have. So that's uh, I think that's really clever. Also this uh, smoke that's used as bubbles. Just really cool uh, decorations. Now this uh, angler fish, it only really works from one angle. So that's probably also why a rhythm uh, restricted viewing the park from uh, from other angles. Now not everybody uh, liked that. Um, it's also not my favorite when people do it. But still, from this angle, the park uh, looks really nice. I love what he did with all the foliage. That's just uh, so nicely done. I also love the different shades, so there's purple plants here, uh, green plants. Yeah, it all, it all just looks uh, incredible. Um, the foliage is done in a really nice way, so is the rock work here and all the decorations. So a really nice entry from uh, Rhythm, but I hope to see a four angle entry from him uh, next time. Okay, and here's the final entry. This entry is from Henkert. Uh, here's the shuttle, lo a shuttle loop coaster that he made. So it's more like one of those arrow, arrow uh, shuttle loops, one of the earliest kinds of uh, launched coaster. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, queue inside this uh, building. They travel up this staircase and then they end up on top of this building. 
goes through, leaves the station here, travels through this loop, and then there's this uh, section over here, and there's a, a shoestring that uh, uh, allows the coaster to travel backwards uh, here again. So yeah, a pretty nice uh, layout. Um, why, well, of course, the layout of the coaster is just a shuttle loop. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, layout several times. Um, but yeah, the way he did these supports, uh, I think that's really nice. Uh, also, this uh, this uh, section here at the end, some nice uh, stairs leading upwards. Uh, yeah, the, st the stairs here in the station, also uh, quite nice. It's nice to see the guests actually queuing here, rather than just hiding it inside the building. Also, this uh, stair leading down, it's nice to see it exposed. And also, with these signs uh, in the middle, that uh, yeah, for uh, more decoration. So lots of diagonal paths here, uh, lots of uh, nice stairs, nice buildings. Uh, also, I think Henke did an incredible job here on the plants that he placed. Uh, they all look uh, really good. So a little uh, shop here, or taco taco. <laughs> also incredible uh, buildings here. Uh, in the, yeah, on this side of the map. You can also see some uh, bumper cars here. Uh, one thing that I also thought was really funny is this uh, launch freefall, which he called Texas uh, Giant. <laughs> Probably because uh, it uh, meant he could uh, use these signs with uh, uh, facing forward. That was quite funny. So yeah, overall, uh, I think this is a really nice entry from uh, Hankert. Okay, it's now time to reveal who is the winner of the round. Uh, I've showed you the entries from Henkert, from Rhythm, and from Risico. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see who is the winner of the Shuttle Loop Mini Contest. The winner of the Mini Shuttle Loop Contest is... Risiko. Yeah, um, I believe he scored like around one half point higher than the other contestants. Uh, still, um, yeah, a lot of good entries in this round. Um, a lot of uh, new people also joined in this contest, so that's always uh, really nice to see. And quite a lot of uh, clever tricks uh, were used, especially in uh, the other uh, shuttle loop uh, coaster, which had uh, push cars. I thought that was uh, really cool uh, to see, and I really uh, liked that. But yeah, overall, uh, also entries like these, uh, <laughs> they just really stood out with all these uh, nice buildings and the, in the integration of this coaster into the uh, landscape. So yeah, wonderful entries from a lot of people. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing all these entries uh, come in. Um, we'll start a new mini contest soon. Uh, I hope to see as, uh, as many uh, entries and I hope again lots of new people joining in. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, for the people who joined. I hope you all uh, enjoyed playing in this mini contest. And I hope to see you all in the next one. See you later. <laughs>